Hi everyone, this is Haight, and today we're going to do a replay review of Dishonored, one of my favorite games. Um, for me personally, what makes a game my favorite or me to consider it great is it having good replayability. If I've spent $50 on it, I want it to feel fresh and fun and exciting and achievement worthy when I replay it. I don't want a single playthrough for it. I know other people have their own uh, benchmarks for greatness. This is my personal one. So with Dishonored, you play Corvo Otano, who's a personal bodyguard to an empress. She is assassinated, you are wrongfully accused for it, and you begin your missions in Cold Ridge, Cold Ridge Prison. After you break out of there, you have different assignments to take down the guys that brought you down. So, um, you have something in Dishonored, it's a system they made called Chaos. You either have high chaos from being an outright assassin and killing people or causing a lot of disturbances, raising a lot of alarms, or you have low chaos for doing choke-out styles, non-lethal takedowns, or not being seen by a guard, getting the ghost achievements, and not setting off alarms. Now, the reason I bring up the chaos is the chaos actually has a lot to do with how the game, um, the NPCs, will perceive you, uh, how many weepers, which are plague-infected victims, uh, come about, or whether they come about at all. There's a particular part in the game, in the sewers, that if you have very low chaos, uh, the weeper community is just plague victims that haven't really become weepers yet, but if you're in a high chaos or medium-ish chaos, it will be full of weepers that want to kill you. So. It does have its boon and benefits, and it makes the game a totally different game to play because the environments have changed around it, while the mission objectives remain fairly the same. For example, <clears throat> with the main bosses, uh, I say bosses, but main objectives, in game you have non-lethal takedowns and you have lethal takedowns. The non-lethal takedowns sometimes take a playthrough to get used to the mission to know where everything is um, because sometimes it's not necessarily near your objective but they're very uh, satisfying and rewarding to get so sometimes you do have to replay this game to get that. Now one of the things that Dishonored does so very well that I wish Thief uh, when they remade it, because the early Thieves were one of my favorites. It's one of the reasons I love this game, because I feel it has a the essence of it, is the new Thief feels very claustrophobic. You don't have this open environment that you have in Dishonored, which makes it the great game that it is. It's very open. It's very vertical in the city. If you see a ledge, you can pretty much get up to it with your blink ability, or once you um, charge up your jumping, have that extra height. Um, now, like I said, to get high chaos, you can go out and just straight up murder people. It'll pretty much get you high chaos. You can turn the uh, engineering devices, arc pylons and things of that nature against the guards instead of against an unknown assailant. This counts as a kill, it counts as chaos, so the more you do this, the higher the chaos. Let's say you don't do this, let's say you take out the oil tank so it won't go after yourself or the guards. You can do that non-lethal type of takedown or playthrough and receive different results. So it gives you, again, immersive feeling to it. It gives you, there, this game has great lore. The, the writers of this game did a really good job on making the lore very mysterious. Um, you want to know more about it, you actually will pick up the books to, to read a little. Um, but if you just want to bum rush through it just to see how it feels to do those drop assassinations to straight out kill everyone, you can do that as well. I personally feel there's much more finesse in doing the non-lethal takedowns. Uh, you have to really notice the pathing and the sensitivity of the AIs responding to audio-visual cues. So um, in here, I've done a lot of this in the bridge scene, and the reason I chose the bridge when doing this review is because the bridge shows the most uh, vertical use of architecture in this game and the ability to go up it, to have that freedom like I was talking about, the thing that I feel like Thief lacks, that claustrophobic, foggy feeling. This is very clear, it's very open, it's very nice. And even when you get into the Knife of Dunwald, where you play Dowd, who really assassinated your Empress, um, 
that has great vertical movement. It has the low high chaos. Um, same with Witches of Brigmore, where, which is the continuation of Dowd's story. So they did a really great job. They made both DLCs and its original game very replayable, very open, very free, very fun. Um, I feel that if you were to get these games, you would play it more than once, uh, assuming, of course, it, it piques your interest. If it doesn't, then, you know, there's there's nothing a game a developer can do to, to keep you there. But if this play style and this environment piques your interest, this will be very replayable for you. I give it my replayability uh, seal of approval. I love Dishonored. So, thank you.